to the new daytime show, The Beta Bollocks, where we talk and occasionally fight about hot topics and burning questions on whether Taylor Swift's music is really that good or real world politics. I am your host, Mr. Cool, and before we get into the episode, let's talk about how this show works. Take it away, Mark! Thank you, Mr. Cool. The show will follow four easy steps. First, the interviewer makes a statement on the subject picked. Secondly, the interviewer then asks a question where you must answer both for and against the statement. Today's subject is drug decriminalization. Statement 1. Concerns around the legalization of drugs that might encourage testing, especially among young people, are well-founded. Eliminating legal consequences may inadvertently reduce preserved risk risks associated with drug use, thereby increasing curiosity and engagement with said substances. Now my question for you, sir, is if drugs are decriminalized, won't it become harder to deter young people from experimenting with potentially harmful substances? Look, taking the time, please start answering now. While it will be hard to deter all teenagers, we must accept that drug decriminalization by itself won't bring any change. We must implement other policies to help drug addicts and prevent other people from becoming future drug addicts. And one way to do this is by educating our young on the harms of substance abuse. But as you said once again, by eliminating legal consequences, we may reduce perceived risks associated with drug use or substance abuse. So it is crucial to find a balance between deterrence and change. Okay, now against. Starting now. The decriminalization of drugs will certainly lead to an increase in drug use, as is the case in Thailand, which legalized the production and consumption of marijuana, aka weed. And now, in 2023, weed has now been normalized in Thailand. Young teens are now more exposed to weed shops than ever, leading them to eventually fall into the traps traps of substance abuse. Not to mention that marijuana is a notoriously hard substance for addicts to leave. How well spoken of you. Now moving on. How well spoken of you. Now moving on. Statement 2. The potential economic advantages of drug decriminalization extend beyond the boundaries of social and public health considerations. Across various sectors, transitioning from punitive measures to a more comprehensive and health-oriented strategy could yield positive outcomes. So my question for you now is, what potential economic benefits could arise from the decriminalization of drugs? Look, taking the time, please start answering now. Well, Mr. Kuo, as you said, transitioning from punitive measures to a more comprehensive and health-oriented strategy could yield positive in- outcomes. The legalization of drugs would lead to a diminish ex- to diminish expenses related to drug law enforcement, encompassing costs attributed to law enforcement law enforcement agencies and judicial proceedings. This would also release resources for tackling other issues within the criminal justice framework, notably the overcrowding of jails and penitentiaries. Okay, now against. Starting now. Okay, uh, backtracking to the previous question. Uh, If drug decriminalization occurs, will have to spend even more money on new social policies and further education to prevent teens from becoming future drug addicts. And since decriminalization leads to a normalization in drug use, teens will come and go and some will repeat the same mistakes over and over again, which will lead to even further budget costs. Okay, well done. Now moving on to the last one. Statement 3. 
In a scenario where drug possession is decriminalized, reconciling the perspective of treating addiction as a public health issue and simultaneously ensuring individuals remain accountable for their conduct poses a significant challenge. If drug possession is decriminalized, how do we strike a balance between treating, treating addiction as a health issue while still holding individuals accountable for their actions? We must understand once again that drug decriminalization by itself won't bring any change. We must implement other policies to help drug addicts and prevent other people from becoming future addicts, future drug addicts, as I've said before. Establishing a framework where addiction is understood as a complex health condition rather than a moral failing. When addressing drug policies, we must emphasize the importance of preventing ambiguity and confusion to avoid sending the wrong message to the greater population. Okay, now against. Starting now. Drug decriminalization won't change a thing. It will only cause a loop of suffering by teens coming in and out of rehab centers because there is no clear punishment, nothing. As drugs are normalized and society stays the same, nothing changes while we, again, waste government budget, continuously lose future working force, which then leads to even less money to further spend on society. How well spoken, all of these were pretty good. Now, thank you to the viewers for watching this and I hope to see you next time. Yeah, this is Mr. Cool signing you off. See you later.